Good evening, everyone. It's great to see you here today. We're going to start our meeting with an invocation and our pledge. I'm going to ask Mr. Richard Johnson if he put, would to come up and lead us in our invocation. Stand if you so desire. May we pray. O oh, graceful and merciful Heavenly Father, once again, we come before thy throne of mercy. We come this hour in the evening, our Father, to render unto thee some kind and sincere thanks. Thanking you, our Father, for another day's journey. Thank you, my Master, that you have enabled us to assemble for the final city council meeting in the year of 2019. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through a 12-month journey. And we pray tonight, our Father, that you would bless this city, this state, and this nation. We ask you, Lord, to bless the city council members. And as they deliberate on the matters of the city, give them clear minds and fair hearts. These blessings we ask you in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Johnson. At this time, we have a special treat. I'm going to ask uh, Troop 1417 of the Girl Scouts. We have several members here. And I'm going to ask them if they would come up to this podium. This is all unscripted, so uh, these ladies are doing great. You can just stand right in front of this mic. There you go. Perfect. Now, it may take an extra second, but would each one of you, now you'll face this way because the flag is up here. And if you would, <laughs> would you introduce yourselves to, to council at this time? Y'all can just, just start on the end and, and go if you would. You say your name. Yeah. I'm Sophie Jack Gaddis. Hey, Sophie, welcome. Grace Francis Bellinger. Welcome, Grace. Kenley, Gr Kenley Grace Hughes. Thank you for being here, Kenley. Allie Mae Bennett. Hey, Allie. Lexa Nicole Williams. Lexa. Katie. Katie. Christina. Christina. Thank y'all for being here. So if you would do us the honor of leading us in our pledge, we'll all turn and face the flag. And if one of you will just start the Pledge of Allegiance for us. <laughs> Why don't we do it on three? Here we go. One, two, three. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well done, ladies. Thank you so much. I, I'm going to tell you, the mayor has led that multiple times, and I never got that big a, and that loud of crowd participation, so well done. We want to read our guidelines for our meeting at this time. Meetings are public forums in which many opinions are expressed, and the business of the city must be conducted. As such, disciplined, honorable, and professional decorum is paramount. Courteous and respectful communication is expected. During public hearings, all questions and statements from the public shall be directed to the chair. And if you wish to speak, raise your hand and I will certainly recognize you. Please approach the podium and state your name and address. And in order to allow an opportunity for everyone who wishes to address council, speakers should limit their comments to the subject being discussed. Each speaker will be given five minutes to address an issue. And at 4.30, if you go that far, I will, I will give you a reminder to let you know it's time to wind it down. Um, just a motion so, you, so you'll know where you're at on time. Um, and if, if any questions are posed to the speaker from council at that time, you would certainly be given extra time to answer those questions. And we do appreciate everyone following our guidelines so that we can have orderly meetings and we can pass information so we can make the best decisions uh, for our city of Aiken. With that, I would like to recognize our mayor pro tem, Councilwoman Leslie Price, for additions or deletions to the agenda. Councilwoman Price. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And good evening to our audience, uh, guests, and uh, community stakeholders. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there has been no changes submitted uh, to alter the agenda that's, be that's been presented to us. So having said that, I move for the adoption of the agenda as presented. Very good. We have a motion. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. All those in favor of the agenda as presented, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. The minutes were given to council uh, for the review before our meeting. Is there a motion to accept the minutes as presented? So move, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman Broll. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. All those in favor of the minutes as presented, please raise your hand. 
and that's unanimous. We're off to a great start today. <laughs> We're going to move down to that section of our agenda for presentations. Item number one is recognition of our Girl Scout Troop 1417 who we've met and a Boy Scout Troop 421 for Scout Projects. And I will recognize our city manager at this time. Thank you. Mr. Beanbow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we do have two Scout groups. Uh, first, I would ask that the uh, girls from Girl Scout Troop 1417 uh, come back to the podium. And while they are coming, we, I just want to note that they did complete a bronze award project by building and installing a bat box in the Carolina Bay Nature Preserve, which is located uh, adjacent to Park, uh, excuse me, Price Avenue and uh, uh, Two Notch Road. They uh, the, and the girls introduced themselves earlier and the bat box was installed April of this year. So I know they each have something they want to read uh, describing the project for council and for our audience. Fantastic. 2019 Girl Scout Troop 1417 Bronze Award Project Skeeter Eater Bat Boxes. What are bat boxes? Bat boxes are artificial roosts designed to encourage bats into areas where there are few rootings, roosting sites. Why are bat boxes important? Bat, bat boxes are important because they help keep bats safe. Why do we want to keep bats safe and aching? We want to keep bats safe and aching because they cut down on the population of mosquitoes and other bugs by eating them, a single bat can eat up to 1,200 mosquito-sized insects every hour, and each bat usually eats 6,000 to 8,000 insects each night. Hungry Why there. did we choose to build bat boxes? We wanted to provide homes for bats and encourage them to live here and reduce the population of mosquitoes and other pests. Having bat boxes will give them a proper home instead of living in people's chimneys and attics. We learned that mosquitoes are not only an annoyance to humans, but they also carry heartworms, which can infect dogs. And we also, and we want to keep the dogs healthy. What areas do bats like to live in? They like to be near water because that's where the mosquitoes are and that's their food source. They like to be in the sun, believe it or not. When they are sleeping in the bat box, they like to be warm. Are there other benefits to having a bat box? Bat poop, known as guano, is also a quite popular fertilizer because it has an ideal radio of nutrients for plant growth. Wow. Very good. That's a lot of very amazing. I'd like to introduce our, our Parks, Rec, and Tourism Director, Ms. Jessica Campbell. Ladies, ladies y'all may want to stay oh. up. Stay up. Yeah. <laughs> Grace. Jack. And Katie. So may I ask the, a question? How is it? Is a bat box, how many people stay? I mean, how many bats are, are in a bat box? Is it um, multiple? A lot? A lot. <laughs> They say you eat like a bat, you're it in trouble. On, it, counts on how, <laughs> it counts on how big the bat box yeah. is. The larger the one in Carolina Bay can hold like 1,300 or something. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. Very impressive. We work with um, ecologists at SR, um, on its site to learn about the bats, right? What a great project. Thank, thank you so much for doing this for our city and so that uh, our animals are protected and our people from mosquitoes, right? So thank you. Well done. Great project. Mr. Mayor, yes. can we ask the parents and the family mm -hmm. members to stand? Yeah. Well, the parents of these, the Girl Scouts and their family members, please stand, and especially the volunteers as well. Yes. That's not an easy Very job. Good. And I think we have one more recognition. We do, Mr. Mayor. Craver King uh, with Boy Scout Troop 421 has completed his Eagle Scout project by building and installing a cross-country trailhead kiosk, starting line base posts, and trail mile marker signs at Generations Park. And he completed this project November 1st. So we would like to recognize Craver right, right now. All right. Yeah. yeah, come on up. Absolutely.
But I saw that kiosk, and that's quite an accomplishment. You did you did well on that. Thank you. So I couldn't have done it without the help and support of the city, my dad, and uh, our our neighbor, Mr. Dan Williams. He helped us build it in his uh, in his shop under his house. We uh, were able to get funding for it, and it went pretty smoothly. Well, let me say thank you for that, and then let me say congratulations on on your Eagle Scout. That's quite yes. an accomplishment, yes, also. Yes. Yes. I'm not surprised. He lives next door to me. I feed his dog. Uh, <laughs> good, good for you. Alive. Yeah, the dog is still alive, and hopefully, I can get Craver to build me a bat box. That'd be good too. And he could do it. I can assure you. <laughs> well done, Craver. Thank, Thank you. you for being here tonight. Next, we have a proclamation recognizing women at Woodside on, and their contributions to the community. And I'd like to recognize Councilwoman Andrea Gregory to uh, read our proclamation. Councilwoman Thank you, Gregory. Thank uh, you, Mayor. Um, about a, uh, it's been maybe a month or two ago, I uh, went to the Women of Woodside luncheon. And I was really taken aback by the true contributions that this organization um, has, the, the impact they have on our community and the selflessness that I have witnessed throughout the many years of um, the volunteership and the time um, these members put into giving back to all of the various charities within our community. So I felt it was appropriate for us to recognize them. And a lot of people, I, I get a lot of commentary in, in, uh, regarding you know, what is the women of Woodside? We hear, we hear about them and, you know, we've heard of them, but we don't really know what they, what they do. What, are, what is that? They live in Woodside. And so I'm like, no, no, there's so much more to them. And I found it appropriate to recognize them today and then give them a moment um, to come up, if you can. I know um, Ms. Chris Jakubic, is she, is she here? There she is, please. <laughs> um, Margie Robertson and Julia Brzezowski are also here. They are the community outreach co-chairs. Um, Ms. Chris is the president of the Women of Woodside. Kathy Barr and Pat Dunlop, they're the uh, member support co-chair. So if you're here, I'd love for you guys to stand up before Ms. <coughs> Chris gives her brief presentation. We also have Susan Chappell, who's our first vice president. Okay. And okay. Donna Horvath, who's our past president with us right. today oh, in the excellent. audience. Oh, excellent, excellent. So. I'm glad they came. If you ladies can stand up, I would love to recognize you first. Mayor, is it okay if Ms. Chris Please. briefly presents? Oh, certainly. Sure. Hey, good evening. Uh, I want to thank you so much for inviting us to be with you, particularly you, Councilwoman Gregory, um, for making this possible. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to the community outreach chairs in just a minute so they can share with you a little bit more about what we do in the community. But um, uh, we're now in our 31st year uh, with a women's organization for Woodside Plantation. And we're dedicated to the well-being of the Aiken community and our members. And we're recognized by the state of South Carolina as a non-for-profit organization of 501C4. Um, since its inception, we've contributed in excess of $1.3 million back to the Aiken area. And we um, <coughs> assist in supporting 30 plus charitable agencies and organizations. And, um, the community outreach chairs will share more of that with you. And we also have a good time. Part of our mission is a good time for our members and educational opportunities. So our mission statement is that we continue to serve the local community through fundraising and charitable giving, and that we work to promote the enjoyment of our members through various social activities. So um, without further ado, here's Margie and Julie. Our dynamic duo. <laughs> we are very good friends. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get through the community outreach program and still be good friends. <laughs> uh, we're pleased to be here tonight. Uh, we are the co-chairs of uh, Wells Community Outreach, and we're the ladies that are responsible for raising the money for our charities and deciding once we have board approval where that money will go. Julie's going to recount some of the recent fundraisers we've had, our successes. Julie. 
And thank you again, Andrea, for making this possible. Um, our year kicked off in September and we got off to a fast start. In October, we participated in the Alzheimer's Walk and the WOW Walkers raised over $4,300 um, ahead of and during the walk and we were honored by our mayor uh, for being the second year in a row the largest volunteer organization to raise the most money for the walk uh, for Alzheimer's second year in a row so we're a bunch of old ladies but we can raise money <laughs> and, as soon as and, we walk. Were, and walk <laughs> as soon as we finished the Alzheimer's walk we went right into <coughs> spooky to be hungry and that's the food drive for Golden Harvest. Margie and I decided this year to change it up a little bit and to do a monetary food drive instead of a clean the junk out of your pantry food drive. And in just a day and a half, because of the weather, we raised $6,025, mm -hmm. day and a half cash, which we were able to donate to Golden Harvest Food Bank here in Aiken. We thought that was great for our first endeavor. <laughs> Just a week ago, we had our holiday home tour, tea and craft boutique. We could go today, and the money is still coming in. That was open to the public. The tickets are $25, and all of the money does go to charity. And it looks like we netted close to $9,000 from that charity event. Wow. Um, we do small events as well. We sell mailbox huggies, the little swags that you put on your mailbox at Christmas. We raised $500 from that, and that money goes this week to the Salvation Army um, Family Center in downtown Aiken. And one of the coolest things we do every year is the angel tag program. Mm -hmm. And 200 women take one or more angel tags and we decide on the agencies that will be the beneficiaries and they go out and shop for a specific person, an older person, a young person, and in a lot of cases we know it's the only Christmas these people get. So you go out and shop, it's so much fun, and this year the four agencies were Mental Health America, um, Senior Life Services, uh, what is it, Pregnancy, Life Center Service Pregnancy, <clears throat> and Child Advocacy, mm -hmm. and it is really, good feeling when you see all those presents. So we do have a long history of, of giving in the community. We give to about 30 or 40 charities every year. This year, Margie and I decided to try a different approach and we decided to launch our inaugural capital campaign. And uh, that has just recently kicked off and will go <coughs> until next year, September. And our goal is to raise $25,000, which will be able to give back to the community. Excellent. Thanks. And we'll turn it over to Margie. And the post. Uh, when Julie and I decided on the capital campaign this summer, we decided to, that we would focus in three areas in Aiken County, uh, health, education, and seniors. We've visited various charities in Aiken County and limited our number to three charities. For seniors, we are giving money to the Community Medical Clinic of Aiken County, in the Health Arena, the Child Advocacy Center of Aiken County, and in the field of education to Jim. I don't know if you know what Jim is, but it stands for, I always have to get this straight, Guide, Educate, and Motivate. It's a program for high school girls, uh, senior year, that are definitely going to go on with their education, whether it's in tech school or college or the military. And they're disadvantaged young women and they lack the skills to really know how to make this goal. So it's a mentoring program as well as a scholarship program. We were very impressed when we talked to the, that organization. Originally our capital campaign focused on donations from our WOW members. We've now gone beyond that. We're really looking for people like you all, people in the business world to help us. We did just get a money from um, uh, uh, Jim Hudson, Alexis in Augusta. We're very proud of that. That's our first corporate sponsor. We hope to do more of that, uh, go, having corporations donate even more money to us. Uh, but I do want one thing, Julie's got the poster. This, is, this was the poster that we did for our advertising, and as you can see, it says time to wow Aiken with our generosity. That's our goal. Even though we raise money, we also focus on donating our time. Right now, we are delivering Meals on Meals on Wheels, probably have about seven teams. 
Uh, Julie is working with Hopeland's Gardens for volunteers for the Festival of Lights. We s have volunteers at North Aiken Elementary School working with classroom teachers on reading and writing. And lastly, the new organization, which you probably read about in the standard, Heavenly Peace. Uh, they build bunk beds. And their motto, it's a national organization, but there's never been an organization here in Aiken County. And their motto is, no child sleeps on the floor in Aiken County. <clears throat> Couldn't be a better motto. motto. Uh, we hope we've presented you with uh, information on our program. We're very proud of it. We hope to be very successful with our capital campaign. And I do have a few brochures that I will pass out. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Councilwoman Gregory, while they're doing that, would you like to read the uh, proclamation that we'd like to present them with into our record? Absolutely. Thank you so much for your presentation. I think that gave a phenomenal overview of everybody's efforts. Um, at this point, I'd like to um, present you with a proclamation for the women of Woodside. Thank you. It's okay. Uh, whereas the Women of Woodside, Inc., WOW, the Women's Organization of Woodside Plantation, was founded in 1988. And whereas the Women of Woodside is dedicated to the well-being of the Aiken community and its fellow members and is recognized by the state of South Carolina as a not-for-profit organization as a 501c4. And whereas since its inception, the women of Woodside has contributed in excess, excess of $1.3 million to the Aiken area and assists in, a, in supporting 30 plus charitable agencies and organizations. And whereas, in addition to fundraising and volunteering, Women of Woodside plans and organizes various social activities and events for its members throughout the year. And whereas, Women of Woodside also supports our community's cultural programs, both professional and academic. And whereas the Women of Woodside Community Outreach has announced a capital campaign with the goal to raise $25,000 through individual and corporate donations with the funds being donated to various community organizations. And whereas the Women of Woodside's Community Outreach for 2019-2020 includes Meals on Wheels, Alzheimer's Walk, and Angels Project and a food drive with funds presented to the Golden Harvest Food Bank, and members also spend many hours a week at an elementary school working with students and assisting teachers in the classroom. Now, therefore, the, city, the Council of the City of Aiken does hereby recognize and honor the women of Woodside for their service to the local community through fundraising and charitable giving to various organizations in the Aiken community. We'd like to present that. Chris, you may want to come up as well. give everyone a few minutes. Moving down our agenda to old business, item number one, this is approval of appointments and discussion of appointees to various city boards, commissions, and committees. And I'll recognize our city manager, Mr. Stewart Biedenbaugh. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we have tonight uh, one appointment for council consideration, and it is Brooke Thomas to the Equine Committee for a term that would expire January 28th, 2021. And that is the only appointment before you tonight, Mr. Mayor. Very good, thank you. Is there a motion to accept this appointee at this time? So moved. Thank you, Councilwoman Broll. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. All those in favor of this appointee, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous, thank you. At this time, we will take nominees to be considered our next public meeting. Our first of Mr. Mayor, I'll be uh, proposing Mike Naples for the E&E &E committee. Very good. And I will be appointing Dr. Stephen Simmons to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Any other names to be considered at our upcoming meeting? Yes, reappointment for Charles Matthews. Okay. And that's planning, planning commission. commission. That's planning. Sorry. And um, I'd like to propose um, Ron Delamora for the Energy and Environmental Committee. Very good. And all, and I have uh, a reappointment of um, Lucy Knowles for the DRB Design Review Board. Design good. and Review Board. <laughs> All right, a lot of good appointments. Any, any other for consideration at our next meeting? Our city clerk is smiling because she's so excited. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, council, appreciate that. Sir, if I could get a list of the um, equestrian committee to see who we have appointed now. So I, I still have some, I saw some appointments to the equestrian committee, so I'd like to get a list of who, who's on that currently, okay? All right. Moving down old business to item number two, this is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to annex 10 lots on Branchwater Lane and zoned in residential single family RS-15. By title and ordinance to annex to the corporate limits of the city of Aiken, certain properties consisting of 10 lots and 9.44 acres of land, more or less owned by several owners and located on Branchwater Lane and to zone the same residential single family RS-15. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Councilman Gerardo. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Comments from staff. Thank you. Uh, there are properties along Branchwater Lane, which is a cul-de-sac, uh, in Jim Lakes in the Oaks subdivision, which is off of Huckleberry Drive. They they came to the city earlier this year requesting annexation and zoning of the property, residential single family. Uh, they also have requested acceptance of Branchwater Lane by the city. Uh, this petition is unusual in that unlike other annexation petitions uh, that we get that are single parcels, we are utilizing what is recognized under state law, the 75% annexation method, which would allow for the annexation of those parcels not in the city currently, as well as uh, taking over the road. We reviewed the petition filed and we verified that eight of the 10 properties um, which is 80% were included in the petition and it comprises 75%, excuse me, 76% of the total assessed value of the property. One of the parcels is owned by the city of Aiken and it uh, contains a sanitary sewer lift station. So the city uh, council gave uh, me permission to sign that petition on behalf of the city uh, several months back. And then we had to go through a, a longer than normal advertising period per state law, unlike normal annexations using this method. All properties do have access to city of Aiken water and sewer and um, were uh, under that policy. So they would have to annex once contiguous if a property transfer occurred. Um, we had previously annexed several properties as property transfers have taken place over the last several years. They currently have city fire protection and upon annexation would also have uh, police protection from our public safety and receive city solid waste service. Our engineering staff reviewed the road um, and believe it is in a good condition to accept it and maintain it in our roads inventory. Our planning commission heard this consider, uh, at, our, at their October 15th meeting and all present on the Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of the application. You approve this at first reading November 25th and it is before you for second reading tonight. Thank you, Mr. Beanbo. Any comments from the audience? Comments from council? 
And all those in favor on second reading, please raise your hand. And that passes you down, so thank you. Moving down on business to item number three. This is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to annex 327 East Pine Log Road and zone it limited business LB. By title and ordinance to annex property owned by Carl L. Johnson and to zone the same limited business LB. Is there a motion? I so move. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilwoman Broll. Uh, comments from staff? Thank you. The um, applicant and owner of the property is requesting this annexation at 327 East Pine Log Road. He is requesting annexation because he is changing the use or he would like to change the use from single family residential to a beauty salon as required in our city services policy for water and sewer. Um, if a property is contiguous and served by city utilities, any change of use other than a change within the single family residential uh, use will require annexation. The applicant is requesting a limited business uh, zoning for the property and uh, our staff reviewed this and believes that is an appropriate designation to recommend the council consider as part of this annexation. The planning commission reviewed this at their November 12th meeting and all commissioners present at that meeting unanimously voted to accept uh, the application with one condition and that is that the Board of Zoning Appeals, our BZA, approve a special exception request to allow a beauty salon to operate at this property. You uh, reviewed this and had a public hearing on first reading November the 25th and it is before you for second reading and a public hearing tonight, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, Mr. Bebo, has BZA reviewed this yet? No, they have not. Okay. So that, that um, requirement would still exist if we pass it? That is correct. Uh, that is one of the conditions that the BZA must approve that special exception. Thank you. Any comments from the audience? Comments or questions from council? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of second reading, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous, thank you. Moving down old business to item number four. Yes, sir. Let the record show that Councilman Waltz is recusing himself from this item. Waltz. Item four. This is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to annex 1224 Williams Drive and zone it residential single family RS15. By title and ordinance to annex property owned by Carl and Sharon Bankert and to zone the same residential single family RS15. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman Price. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman Broll. Uh, comments from staff? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Pursuant to our water and sewer annexation policy, this uh, the property owners are requesting of this annexation at 1224 Williams Drive in uh, Conger Woods portion of Aiken Estates, excuse me, the South Conger Woods subdivision of Aiken Estates. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this request at their November 12th meeting and all Planning Commissioners present at the meeting unanimously recommended that Council, excuse me, that this property be annexed and zoned residential single family RS-15. Uh, council uh, minus uh, Councilman Waltz who is recusing himself since he has an interest or, or owns property adjacent to this property. Um, all of the other six council members heard this item at first reading and public hearing November 25th uh, and it is before you tonight at second reading. Thank you, Mr. Bingo. Any comments from the audience? Comments or questions from council? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous with a, a recusal from Councilman Waltz. Thank you. You got it here? You can get up and walk around. You got it. Welcome back. I missed y'all. <laughs> 
All right, we're going to move on down old business to item number five. This is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance to amend the concept plan for Woodside Executive Office Park on Silver Bluff Road by title and ordinance amending the concept plan for property located at the intersection of Silver Bluff Road and Woodside Executive Court. Is there a motion? So moved. Captain Gerardo. Thank you. Councilman Waltz, comments from staff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, P&S Property Holdings doing business as Woods Farm Market. The applicant is requesting approval of this revised concept plan for approximately two <laughs> acres of undeveloped property that is uh, located on the uh, original Woodside Executive Office Park Plan residential property. It is located on Silver Bluff Road between Woodside Executive Court and Hidden Haven Drive. This request uh, proposes a 3,500 square foot structure for a farm market in a cafe. It will have produce, dry goods, flowers, local arts and craft, and light dining. Um, the concept plan must be reviewed by the Planning Commission and approved by City Council. The property is currently undeveloped with tree coverage. The building would be a modern barn exterior with a covered porch and second story window with materials made of wood and a earth uh, earth tone palette uh, would be the stone color. The uh, issue about the uh, parking area is where there was a question um, from council at the last meeting regarding the surface that would be uh, for the remaining parking area, area other than handicapped parking spaces which would be paved and we after discussion with staff and the engineer for the applicant uh, during site plan preparation which is a accepted protocol or policy we would uh, staff and the site uh, in the engineer for the site owner as well as the uh, business owner herself they would determine the material used for the remaining bit of the parking area um, the Planning Commission heard this at their November 12th meeting and all Planning Commissioners present approved it and Council had first reading in a public hearing at your November 25th meeting and it is before you today for second reading um, all the um, conditions that the Planning Commission uh, brought to Council at first reading are the same so I will not read those into the record Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you Mr. Beanbow. Any comments from the audience? Comments or questions from council? Excited about that project. Very good. Noted. All those in favor on second reading, please raise your hand. Yeah, that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down the agenda to old business item number six. I got to catch my breath on this one. <laughs> This is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance for adoption of international building codes by title and ordinance to amend chapter 10 section 10-2 of the Aiken City Codes to incorporate the 2018 editions of the International Building Code with modifications, International Fire Code with modifications, International Fuel Gas Code with modifications, International Plumbing Code with modifications, International Mechanical Code with modifications, International Energy Conservation Code, the International Property Maintenance Code, the International Residential Code the mod with modifications, the International Swimming Pool and Spa Code, and the 2017 edition of the NFPA National Electrical Code. Let's repeat that. Yeah. <laughs> is, there, is there a motion? So moved. Lynn Brawl, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. <laughs> Comments from staff? Thank you. Uh, periodically, we must uh, bring to council approval of the latest iteration of the International Building Codes. Uh, once the International Building Code Congress updates these, the South Carolina Building Code Council, upon adoption by the IBC, um, reviews these amendments and directs, directs that local governments adopt them. We have, uh, our staff has reviewed this and we must adopt it via ordinance. The implementation of these codes will take place on January 1st, 2020. You, uh, City Council, approve this ordinance at first reading and public hearing at your November 25th meeting, and it is before you tonight for second reading. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Beaton. Any comments from the audience? 
Any comments or questions from council? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous, thank you. Moving down old business to item number seven, this is a second reading and public hearing of an ordinance approving a budget adjustment for replacement of six public safety vehicles by title and ordinance amending the budget of the city of Aiken for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2019 and ending June 30th, 2020 for replacement of six public safety vehicles. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right, Councilwoman Gregory made the motion. Councilwoman Price made the second. Comments from staff. Thank you. We do have before you a budget adjustment to replace said vehicles. Uh, between the time of passing the budget um, and now the state contract was let and um, bids were received and the state contract price to replace these public safety vehicles are, is a little higher per vehicle which it leaves us with a budget shortfall of 26500 We do have sufficient funds in our public safety vehicle depreciation account to cover this. However, since it's greater than $25,000, it does require council's approval. At the last meeting, uh, council asked who, which vendor was awarded the state contract, and it is Santee Ford of Manning, South Carolina. Um, so you have before you tonight second reading of this item, uh, which would approve the budget adjustment to allow the replacement of six public safety vehicles. Thank you, Mr. Beanville. Any comments from the audience? Okay. Comments or questions from council? Hearing none, all those in favor on second reading, please raise your hand. That's unanimous. Thank you. We move down to that section of our agenda, new business consideration of item number one. This is a first reading of an ordinance to annex 4.56 acres near Owen Street and zone it planned residential PR and approve the concept plan. By title and ordinance to annex to the corporate limits of the city of Aiken certain property owned by VSL Development, LLC, and located near Owen Street and to zone the same planned residential PR and to approve a concept plan. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, thank you, Councilman Gerardo. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. Uh, comments from staff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Woodford Trace SC LLC is requesting an annexation and concept plan approval for approximately 4.56 acres near Owen Street. This project would be a multifamily complex consisting of two and three bedroom apartments uh, for a total of 48 units, 30 of which would be two bedroom, 18 of which would be three bedroom, and have uh, amenities listed in the cover memorandum. In 2006, our city council adopted a policy that requires that if tracts of four acres or greater um, are being rezoned, annexed, or requesting city utility services to be used for residential purposes, then the properties must be annexed and, forced and, and uh, required to comply with the planned residential zoning. This uh, plan residential zoning use requires a concept plan that would be reviewed by the Planning Commission and uh, come before City Council for two readings and approval, considered approval. In reviewing this concept plan, there must be one and a half parking spaces per unit, which will necessitate 72 parking spaces. The plan has 99 spaces. A sidewalk system is shown within the, con, uh, within the uh, complex, but it does not connect uh, with the existing sidewalk along Owen Street to provide a connecting sidewalk system to the surrounding areas. The main entrance to the complex would be an extension of Owen Street, uh, which uh, when the Palmetto Crossing property adjacent to it was constructed, we were deeded um, an easement for said um, construction. The developer has indicated that 41% of the property will be open space. A traffic impact analysis was performed as required and um, the consultant recommended approval of that impact analysis with the condition that the developer coordinate the access points and connections to the future Pawnee Nielsen connector. 
uh, the Planning Commission reviewed this at their October 15, 2019 meeting, and those present voted six to nothing, six to zero, to recommend denial of this application on the basis that transportation uh, facilities, specifically the road network, are inadequate to serve the project at this time. Um, now, the request for annexation and approval of the concept plan is now before council for consideration and I do want to read these conditions into the record. Um, number Part A, additional sidewalks should be included on the site plan to provide access to Owen Street and potential Hamilton Drive extension to the Pawnee Nielsen connector. B, that a gated emergency all-weather road be constructed to Nielsen Street as a secondary access prior to approval of a certificate of occupancy. C, that approval of the TIA is conditioned on the developer coordinating the access points and connections to the future Pawnee Nielsen connector with city staff as part of the site plan review process. D, that any additional easements needed for the Hamilton Drive and Pawnee Nielsen connector be designated for the city of Aiken prior to approval of a site plan. E, that the site and landscape plan comply with the landscape and tree preservation requirements in the zoning ordinance. F, that the signage comply with the requirements of the zoning ordinance. G, that the annexation plat be recorded at the uh, county uh, register of deeds office within 180 days. H, that the transfer of ownership <coughs> be completed within 180 days. And I, that the applicant signs an agreement stating the conditions of approval within 180 days. And uh, for city council consideration is first reading of this ordinance to annex 4.56 acres near Owen Street, zone the property plan residential and approve a concept plan. And do we have, uh, no we do, do we have a representative from the developer? Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, esteemed members of council. Would you like me to, to go ahead and speak tonight? Yeah, if, if, if you would, please, and, okay. and, and identify yourself for the... Uh... All right, very good, I'll do that. Is there a, um, Ryan, is there a, uh, a pointer for the uh, presentation? Yeah, here he comes. Just kidding. Pointer. <clears throat> Esteemed uh, members of council, our dedicated staff, on um, behalf of the uh, Woodford Trace SC LLC uh, entity and the, and the Woodford Trace subdivision that uh, we're proposing, appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. Appreciate the time that uh, many of you have taken to uh, review the project with us. And uh, so I'd like to go ahead and, and just give some information on the project um, and explain why we feel that the, uh, the project is one that's, that's very much needed in the city of Aiken. And I'll give Ron a second to catch up. Sorry, somebody close it out. <clears throat> Is this what we saw in work session? Uh, I did not uh, speak to it in work session, but uh, I'm uh, happy to uh, to no, that, run. No, no, that's fine. Thank you. So we're here because Aiken has a real uh, shortage of affordable housing. Uh, the study that our uh, project presented, which is in agreement with the one that was done for Chamber a while back, currently there's a need for 658 units of affordable housing in Aiken. Um, there are 14, 1,420 income qualified renter households in the market area uh, that would benefit from Housing, and I know that they're not all here tonight, but I can assure you that uh, there's 1,420 people that would love to just say yes to this project. Uh, in the uh, pro in, in the report that was done for um, the chamber, the the affordable housing uh, need, the uh, Maybaum realtors reported that the majority of their rental requests are coming for the south side of Aiken. Um, currently, in Aiken's five affordable housing complexes, they report zero vacancies and long waiting lists uh, with, uh, among the 244 combined units. Um, affordable housing demand is increasing every year by 14, so uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's something that is going to continue to be a, a problem, and this particular development is only going to satisfy 
with 48 units will only satisfy 7% of the current need. Um, affordable housing goes through a, a statewide process where funds are um, uh, reviewed and determined to see which, which ones of the community's projects uh, are, are, are you know, the strongest. They have a rating criteria, and this was one of only two sites in the state that received a perfect rating uh, for site location. Um, based on that rating, uh, this site has been approved, and the tax credits have been uh, authorized, and so um, this is one that we can move forward with. The, the rating criteria that they use are things, rating criteria that they use are, are things uh, like proximity to the schools, to the services, jobs, um, uh, grocery stores, things of that nature that, um, that make this uh, such a good site. Um, we need to be careful about substituting any judgment that we would have on the best location. I know there's traffic in this area, but uh, these funds come from the state, and when they have identified this as an A-plus location, we need to take that very seriously. And in this case, we can't go backwards on this project. If this is turned down, then we're back to ground zero, which means we'd be about another two to three years in a pipeline trying to get the next project. Um, this this uh, project offers affordable housing for Aiken's workforce. Um, I think that sometimes there's confusion about public housing or Section 8 or affordable housing. This is housing that is designed, the tax credit program is designed to uh, offer incentives for the developer to be able to uh, to provide uh, the housing at a, at a lower cost so that they can also then take the rents uh, to a lower price. This project will offer affordable housing to our workforce. And so in order for Aiken to grow, we need to increase our inventory. Uh, the project uh, would allow for uh, income ranges of 22,000 to 40,000. And in looking at the website, there's currently 11 positions posted by the city of Aiken. All 11 of those would be within the affordability range for this project. So it would, it would, it would enable Aiken to offer affordable accommodations to the employees that it's trying to bring to our community. Uh, new jobs at SRS and Cyber Headquarters in Fort Gording are, are creating even more demand. And so what, what they're predicting is that as the senior population retires, they are going to be replaced by millennials. Those millennials are going to fall more into the category of needing the affordable housing, whereas they don't really predict that uh, there's going to be a huge, um, you know, uh, leaving of, of the population from the retirees because we have such a wonderful uh, retirement community. Um, and then these are the new higher estimates that were provided for SRS over the coming years. You can see on average about 570 jobs per year, and that does not account for uh, the cyber jobs. Uh, at, uh, at this time, I would like to, if I could, deflect and give Will Williams a chance to, to say a little bit about our need, our community's need for affordable housing. Good evening, Mr. Williams. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Will Williams, President and CEO of the Economic Development Partnership. Um, I want to speak to the fact that we do not have enough uh, housing stock or, or apartment stock in the city of Aiken. The city, my organization, and the chamber commissioned a study uh, in 2018, which Mr. Pethick um, uh, related to. Uh, but while it did focus a lot on downtown, it spoke to the overall lack of affordable, or as I call it, workforce housing uh, in the area. Many times uh, that when we get requests for information for companies that are looking to potentially locate within our county, they ask about housing and its availability if they haven't already done their research, uh, you know, through the Internet. The two newest outside of the, uh, the one that was constructed not too long ago, the other two newest developments were in 2008 and 2012. Uh, Haven was... Uh, Haven and Marketplace was constructed in 2008. It is at 97% occupancy, and then there was a new complex built. Even though it has Aiken in the name, it's uh, over by Aiken Tech. It's at 100% occupancy. Um, Savannah River site, but more specifically SRNS, uh, last physical year, which the federal physical year runs uh, through September 30th. It begins um, on October 1st. Uh, SRNS hired 1,100 uh, new employees. Now, the majority of those were backfills, uh, but um, of that number, 
51 percent of those new employees um, reside within Aiken, the city of Aiken, in, in the zip codes. However, I know from personal experience uh, from friends who live outside the area, um, one of their children got hired this summer at SRNS in a full-time position and was not able to find um, housing. Now there are rental houses within the city of Aiken, but not that meets uh, the workforce demand. And if you look at uh, the numbers, $40,000 a year is basically a $20 an hour job, which many of our manufacturers in the area um, have, and they also have some that make a little less than that. So we certainly need more affordable workforce housing in the city of Aiken. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much, Will. Um, the the uh, discussion <coughs> with the Planning Commission, um, a lot of it related to properties and complaints or, or problems and complaints with the next door property, um, the, the uh, Palmetto Crossing. Um, one of the things that we want to try to emphasize is these are these are problems that are, are correctable we are not that property but these are problems that through proper um, property management that that you can really make a big difference and we've seen that in in places like DuPont Landing where a, a really strict and and uh, diligent property management company has has done a fantastic job of keeping a very safe community and one that we can all be proud of um, Palmetto Crossing uses third-party managers uh, this developer uh, self-manages um, properties. Um, a lot of the issues that we heard raised the Planning Commission were kind of anecdotal. It was hard to put our hands on it. I've, I've made the habit of driving by very frequently and have not seen nearly the problems that are, that are, that are suggested. Um, and the residents that I've spoken with, at least four or five of them have indicated there's, there, they haven't had any issues with the property that's uh, the property manager. One of them said that they had some, some termites, but that was about as far as, as, as you could hear the complaint. But nonetheless, we do recognize that some of these problems can be resolved with good property management. Um, this particular developer owns and manages over 10,000 units um, through its own management company. So they self-manage, it's not a third-party management. And uh, I wanna take the time at this point to introduce you to Hollis Fitch, who is with the development company. Hollis was uh, born and raised here in Aiken, uh, many of you may know his mother Peggy Fitch, and I assure you that uh, this is a project that she wants him to uh, to deliver to be a real uh, source of pride for Hollis. So, mm -hmm. turn that over. Mr. Fitch, good evening. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, Kevin, I'm pretty sure you're fired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, my name is Hollis Fitch. I did grow up in Aiken. Um, uh, I currently live in Charlotte, North Carolina, but uh, uh, my, since my first 18 years of life, we're at 1000 Whiskey Road. Um, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of the complaints that have come out. Um, I saw the, the information uh, th that was brought up during Planning Commission, and I, I, I saw the, the reference that you know, the, the plan shouldn't be approved based on infrastructure. Um, <sighs> I'm going to speak to the management in just a second, but I want to talk about the infrastructure for just a second. You know, in doing this project, you know, we are zoned in the county, and we're going through this process. You know, we, we employ a traffic engineer at every single project we work on. Um, in Aiken, uh, we had to use an approved traffic engineer from the city of Aiken. We couldn't use the engineer that we already had a relationship with. So we had to use somebody that was an approved <coughs> staff uh, vendor. Um, and the traffic impact that we, the, the study indicated was negligible. Um, it was not a major issue. Um, additionally, you know, when it comes to infrastructure, I think about water and sewer connectivity. Um, you know, a few years back, there was a connection made to the Walgreens that's there on the corner. Um, and there's a, you know, an infrastructure bank that we're gonna have to contribute to. Um, you know, that's, that's part of this. So I, the infrastructure argument, while yeah, I, I, I kind of understand the traffic piece. Growing up in Aiken, um, I waited tables at Ruby Tuesdays out by the mall um, every evening uh, going out there. You know, it, it's literally, what, 2.2 miles uh, to get out there, but it would take 15, 20 minutes. The traffic's been there for 20 years, and it's not going away. Um, that being said, you know, 
the state agencies that score these things, you know, they put an emphasis on the project's location being near schools, being near uh, jobs, being near retail, shopping, uh, grocery being their number one priority. Uh, they don't want to see properties put in a food desert. Um, that's why the site was so appealing in their system. Um, when it comes to property management, I can't guarantee you that there's not going to be a single problem at our development. Can't do it. Um, even with the most rigorous uh, you know, vetting and screening techniques that we do, we're going to have a problem tenant at some point. Um, there's going to be a piece of trash that's left out. Um, what I can tell you is our property management company uh, has been in business for 28 years. And in that 28 years, it has a sterling history. It has never uh, had an uncorrected violation. Um, we have passed inspections you know, left and right from multiple government agencies. We try to do the right thing. Um, and back to Kevin's point, if something does go wrong, I am going to hear from my mother. Um, so uh, with that, I, I don't have anything else to, to say, but um, I, I welcome any questions. Councilwoman Diggs. I guess just for information purposes and for the audience, I'll just ask some of the questions that I asked in the work session. Please do. Um, and I do agree there is a need for affordable housing. Um, and I've seen the problems that's come up with Palmetto Crossing, mm -hmm. the lack of a good manager. Um, the overflowing garbage cans, all of the debris thrown in the woods. Um, but I, I, the, the main thing I was concerned about was safety of crossing that whiskey road and the congested uh, traffic situation, which we have not been able to find a solution for. Well, Leslie got a good idea for it, but we don't have money for that yet. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> So since she can't wave her magic wand right now and, and make that right, uh, I'm concerned about, you know, the little kids that's walking to school and the other people that's uh, back in the area. But I was at Aiken Motorcycle probably two months ago at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We're trying to come back through her parking lot from Palmetto Crossing. And I was there for 45 minutes when I had already tried to get out on um, the Hamilton Drive uh, exit and the Doherty Road couldn't, was unsuccessful with both of those. Mm -hmm. As well as uh, when I got out to do the Pawnee Nielsen, then I had to deal with trying to get on Pine Log from that way. So it was just a mess all around. So I was concerned about those things and, and why you can't put it at another location. Those were my concerns. Can you tell the audience? I, I, I'm happy to. Um, I appreciate the traffic issue. Um, it, it's, it's really twofold. Um, you know, the state agencies, the, the funding for these types of developments is in highly competitive. And the state takes into account, you know, the location of the property. Mm -hmm. um, we could not find another location in Aiken that would have met and scored perfect under their system. Um, additionally, it's a double-edged sword. You know, retailers, they want traffic. Um, you know, Walmart is located there because it's a high traffic area. There's a lot of rooftops living in the area. Um, but with traffic, you know, once you once you build a Walmart right there, now you have other businesses that want to locate next to it, um, and you have, you know, you end up with a, a traffic cluster. Um, there's some positive things that come from that, um, in that uh, you know other businesses are benefiting from the traffic coming from the other retail, but what our tenants will benefit from is having jobs in the near proximity to where they're living, um, and folks in this income range. Um, but that's a huge benefit to them, especially being in close proximity to schools. Uh, with South Aiken High School being right there, um, that, that's a, a major benefit. I, I, I realize that there's concern about sidewalks um, and the pedestrian traffic, <coughs> but I mean, that's why we're here this evening. 
this annexation process is is built so the city can start filling in some of the donut holes that they have in zoning where you have a portion of the county that the city doesn't have any control over that you can bring into the cities through annexation when situations like ours arise so you now have control over that that property and it can help address some of these issues does that does that does that help answer the question I would, I would add to that that uh, this this project offers some connectivity i mean the property eventually it's it's this is one of the least um, you know um, dense uses that can be proposed on this property as far as what's already in the plan and how it's zoned for so that you can hardly find anything that has less density but this property is designed to start to build those sidewalks and to start to create that connectivity that is so badly needed and can offer connection over to the uh, adjacent roads that, that run behind Nielsen connector that run you know behind them all so this starts to offer some solution to that problem Thank you. can you restate the level of investment this brings into our community um, off the top of my head um, it's a moving target but I it's somewhere in the vicinity of eight to, to ten million um, uh, it is, that would have been the last budget, yeah. 8.8 .8 million. 8.8, almost 9. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Fish, the, the calls that I got and the, and the individuals I spoke to um, largely is, is, is not, I think everyone would agree that we have a need in our, in our community for, for um, workforce attainable housing. So I don't think there's any, any issue with that. Uh, it, it was primarily I, I I misspoke in work session I said the intersections of Daughtery and Owens was rated an F and and whiskey one's a D and one's an F correct mm -hmm. and when the improvements that comes up but these to D's but I, you know that was the grounds on which our planning commission looking at what was presented um, okay. to not denied this request now as, as recent as, as work session, uh, we, we had conversations that uh, as, as to develop this, you would be willing to work with our staff to come up with a proposal to actually connect a road to Nilsson or get, give another egress ingress to that area, which uh, would- We would be amenable to it. Um, you know, there's details that had to be worked out, but we're, we're in favor of it. Obviously there's a, a adjacent property owners and other th that we'd right. have to deal with with but um, which which is a part of our connectivity plan that we have in the city for for our roadways correct um, to, to me uh, I mean and I understand our Planning Commission's vote it, mm -hmm. uh, you know with, without that I think I think that was a sound sound vote if we have that which eases not only traffic for for this development but for for other de developments and traffic through that way I, I could see a path forward Okay. But but your your team is amenable to working for a solution with a with a road connecting to Nilsson. We are amenable, uh, you know, subject to the adjacent property owners yeah. uh, being on board. Okay. And we and, and Mayor, we already have a um, without even having to get additional approval from the adjacent property owner, we already have a path that allows for that connectivity. And so I think at least with respect to this project, it. it <laughs> if truly things are as backed up as what you experienced, I don't think that we'll ever experience traffic that is worse than it is right now as we sit in the holiday season and a road construction project going on. <laughs> so we have to be able to forecast to the future where that's going to be complete, that burden is going to be significantly eased. But in spite of that, I think we already have connectivity, but we really like through the council session, the media the suggestions that you've got to, to even look at and explore it better, whatever is, is, is best, but we do have a third party that would you know, require some input. Can you speak to the sidewalk for pedestrian and, and walkability? Uh, there, there's a lot of traffic, and I know you guys haven't built, this has nothing to do with you, but there's a lot of traffic uh, through properties. I mean, I've seen that you, you, you can walk out posted or not posted, there's people cutting across. And granted, I don't blame them because there's no sidewalks on Whiskey Road. I mean, I really don't want people walking along Whiskey Road to get to Walmart from there. But do you do you connect to the Walmart property? Oh, we currently do not connect to the the Walmart property. We're amenable to connecting to it. We abut. We abut yeah, it. we we abut it. But we would have to get an easement from Walmart to actually add connectivity there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if the city wanted to pursue that, we would we'd be on board. 
um, we'd be more than happy to make the connection. And that would be at the edge of your property so that other yes. pedestrians could use that as well? Correct. Um, within our property, part of the requirements from the state, uh, we have to have sidewalk accessibility all throughout the site. And we have to have a, an ADA accessible route to the property edge. Um, obviously, we would, we would hope to be able to connect to sidewalk system from there. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions from council? Because I know we have I, other I individuals. Have a, I yeah. have a comment or two. Yes, ma'am. To, to the audience and to yourself as well. I benefited from your presentation, but what I garnered from that and what needs to be emphasized is that these are working class people. We should not expect or, or prematurely determine that these are reckless people coming in and their children are going to run wild. These are people that care about their families. Are they going to make 30 to 50 to 70 dollars an hour? No. Some of them may make 30. But these are working people, and if you're a working class person uh, that want to get a head start in life, you have to have savings, those kinds of things. And all of us have been there at one time. We just happen to grow into our income level that we are in right now. And that's what we're making provisions for, is working class families. Uh, we are working out, we, we talked about the safety issue, the sidewalk, and making provisions for that. No one wants to place children in unsafe conditions. And between the city and our, and our planning department, we're working out the details to try to make it work in terms of ensuring the safety of sidewalk. I, I would add to that that this is an opportunity, I think, that the recent amendments to the, to the, uh, to, to the, that the city made that requires now annexation in order to fill in these, that, mm -hmm. uh, that's the right direction. That's the direction we need to go to, and in no way are we resistant to becoming a part of the city. We welcome it. And you've given us that opportunity to come and speak to, to you and to allow us to have that dialogue to create the most safe environment that we can. But the other part of it is that safety that we're talking about has existed, that, that issue has existed for a long time, as long as I've been in Aiken, driving my kids up and down Whiskey Road and seeing those pedestrians, it's, it's been there. And I think that rather than trying to force a project like this that's trying to connect and, and solve that problem out, I think we need to invite the other businesses in and let's see if we can get sidewalks that need to exist right now. That's, that's what I would say is that, you know, our community needs affordable housing and we need connectivity and we need safety. So let's all work towards that. I like that, Kevin. That's what Aiken is about. We work together towards those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Jim. Well, thank Appreciate you. that. Sure, sure. I, know uh, we, I know we have a lot of folks here who have opinions and want to certainly express those tonight, and we certainly want to hear those. So at this time, I would open it up for further comment. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Osborne, council members. My name is Dan Fishburn, 1004 Owen Street. I'm part of Glassworks, which is on the corner of Owen Street and Doherty. Um, these gentlemen um, are talking about proposals for affordable housing, but we have to live with the consequences of congestion virtually every day. Um, it doesn't take a traffic study for people to understand that congestion on the south side. I don't know anyone who really doesn't have objections to going to the south side because of the traffic. Uh, Councilman uh, DeWar noticed the lack of infrastructure in 2016 when um, Palmetto Crossing was proposed. Sadly, the infrastructure in our area, the Whiskey Road, uh, Daughtery Road corridor, has not improved. Let's talk about Owen Street and what it actually is. And Councilwoman Diggs, you've been there. Owen Street is a street. It was designed in 1950 to service single-family residents' homes. It's not very wide. It's not very long. It has no sidewalks. There are no sidewalks. And it empties into two of the busiest streets in Aiken County, namely Whiskey Road and Daughtery Road. There are no um, emergency exits. And again, there are no alternatives 
to relieving that congestion off of Owen Street. Again, it's a, a little connector road. It was never designed to, to handle the traffic from Palmetto Crossing, much less the construction detours, uh, the Whiskey Road detours, the Daughtery Road detours. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a mess over there. And it's dangerous. It's just not safe. Owen Street is a disaster waiting to happen. Um, so if, if you come down um, Owen Street, you'll see during certain parts of the day, school buses, you'll see um, uh, trucks, you'll see um, emergency vehicles from Gentry <coughs> Instruments. Uh, Russell there has, um, uh, uh, he works for the, 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 the forestry department. He's got a couple, you've seen it, right, Ray? Yes. And um, so we have promises of infrastructure, but it's not there. So what would infrastructure really look like um, that could handle more development? I'm not just talking about affordable housing. I'm talking about anything in this corridor. Well, it would be a four-lane exit to Whiskey Road, which is under construction as we speak. Um, it would be the Daughtery Road widening which was promised to us in 2020, but I understand we don't have the funding for that. And um, in the neighborhood meetings that we went to, the Dory Road widening is actually like three lanes and two sidewalks. We desperately need sidewalks. We need to, to keep the pedestrians safe. And, and yes, Ms. Diggs, that includes the children too, because they get out, they get active, they come to Walgreens, they go to the mall, and uh, having uh, hoofed it around there a little bit of crossing Whiskey Road and crossing Daughtery, it's just not safe. Um, also, um, you know, the drainage and utility placement would have to support all of this. And uh, it's, it, 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 looking at uh, the construction that, that it took to just widen the road by, what, 30 feet, I mean, to, to move the utilities is very arduous. Um, the other thing is, of course, this Pawnee, uh, this Nielsen Pawnee connector. That would be great. That would relieve the congestion, not just on Owen Street, but also, sorry, I'm creaking. I'm just getting over a cold. Apologize. <laughs> not only would it relieve the congestion on Owen Street, but it, it would relieve the congestion on Whiskey Road and Henry <coughs> Road as well. But again, as council knows, this stuff takes time and money. And I understand from uh, the Planning Commission meeting uh, that uh, that that connector, which would end up at the back of the, what we call the mall, would cost $120 million. That is a lot of money. But let me make myself perfectly clear. I'm not opposed to affordable housing. There is demand for affordable housing. We know that. I'm, I'm not even opposed to landowners and developers making money. That's business. I get it. But what I am opposed to is unsustainable congestion brought on by improper development, okay, executed without the infrastructure to support it. And that's where we are in Aiken. And I've heard, well, we've had these safety issues for 20 years. Well, yeah, we have. We've had these safety issues for 20 years. And if this proposal goes forward, we'll have them for another 20 years, because how long is it going to be before Daughtery Road is paved with sidewalks how long is it going to be before the pawnee uh connector is built to relieve the traffic congestion off of poor little owen street good lord i believe and i hope you do too i hope you can see that city council can better serve the needs of the people by denying the um request and adopting uh the planning commission's um uh recommendations and further encouraging developers to relocate these um, uh, affordable housing, uh, these apartments, to another location which already has the infrastructure to support it. Again, we don't. We live it every day. It's gone from, okay, traffic is good for business to congestion is bad for business and it's unsafe. We live in an unsafe area, and something bad's going to happen. It's a disaster waiting to happen. 
thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Christian. Appreciate you speaking. <laughs> Anyone else like to address council? Marsh, good evening. Thank you to the council for allowing me to speak tonight. My name is Marsha Hopkins. I own Aiken Motorcycle Sales and Service at 2129 Whiskey Road. As well, I own 2101 Whiskey Road, which is in the city of Aiken. Um, for anyone to think that the traffic problem that we have today is same as the traffic problem that we had on Whiskey Road four years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, or when we were growing up is, is not thinking right. The traffic when we were growing up in Aiken was way different than it is now. I've been on Whiskey Road all of my life, even though my home, my house was not on Whiskey Road, but I have lived in a motorcycle shop on Whiskey Road for the better part of my life. Prior to being at 2129 Whiskey Road, our, our motorcycle shop was at 1009 Whiskey Road, probably fairly close to where Mr. Hollis lived. The traffic wasn't that bad back then on Whiskey Road. The difference is I'm still there. I am still in this area. I have seen this problem get worse year after year after year after year. I'm opposed to this planned residential and annexation concept plan. The current infrastructure that we have is not conducive for any new builds. The need for traffic relief prior to any more new builds, the, the need for pedestrian traffic and vehicle traffic release, relief needs to be considered prior to any more new builds in this area where we have this Owens Road Whiskey and Doherty. That is the thicket of their problem. I watched the accidents. I watched the emergency vehicles have trouble getting there. I am there six days a week. I see it. It's my understanding the current construction Doherty to Whiskey is only going to be improved from a level of F to a D or maybe an E, if I remember correctly, during peak times. We still don't know how well that intersection is going to flow once the new restaurant in that intersection gets built. That still remains to be seen. And until that happens, we really don't know what that new level of service is going to be. But we still have the problem where Owens goes out of Doherty and where Owens goes out of Whiskey. On November 28, 2016, at the council hearing where the first apartment complex in this area was approved, there was a lot of discussion of roads being built. On December 6, 2016, WRDW reported that a new road was in the works. This report also stated this road was going to take 13% of the traffic off of roads in the area, <coughs> these same roads that I'm talking about tonight, Owens, Doherty, and Whiskey at that corner there with, with Doherty. It was further stated in this article, and I believe there was members that are currently sitting here tonight that were quoted in this article. It was further stated that other roads and improvements were being looked at that would bring an additional 23% traffic relief. When added together, we're looking at a 35% reduction of traffic release on the most heavily traveled road in Aiken. That didn't happen. We don't need any more false promises of connector roads coming, of relief coming. It did not happen before. At the Planning and Zoning Commission here, October 15th, 2019, I inquired about connector roads. One of the responses I got was that there will be no Whiskey Road relief or Whiskey Road connector roads, and I hope I say this correctly, but that it was an all or nothing 
project and that the project is $125 million and that there is not funds available for that project. Whiskey Road needs relief before any new builds of any type should be approved in this area. The drawing on page 88 of the work session agenda shows a potential driveway at Nielsen and a completed <coughs> Hamilton connector. Again, Whiskey Road needs relief before there are any new projects approved in this area. <coughs> the driveway for this proposed project is shown coming out to Owen Street. I could be wrong, but it looks like it's coming out right where Owen Street makes the 90 degree bend. This is the worst section of Owen Street. There is a blind spot there. I know of several times where I've had people come and tell me I almost hit someone. I just about ran over someone right there. I did not see them. And that's been recently. Working class people drive cars. I'm not against affordable housing. I'm, I'm not against any of these things that are needed. I, I don't understand how the traffic impact study is correct if we're talking about working class people driving to SRNS, schools, hospitals and doctor's offices police departments, fire departments, and other trades. They're going to get there in cars. Folks that don't have cars are going to walk. The infrastructure of this area is over capacity and it cannot even hold the current load that's placed on it. And that was before the Doherty Road construction started. We couldn't handle the load we had before that construction started. Owen Street has a blind spot with a terrible level of service exiting at Whiskey and Doherty. Pedestrian travel on Doherty is not safe. I don't know if any of you have walked down Doherty recently. Any type of travel at this end of Whiskey Road is ridiculous between Wendy's and Target. It is impossible at times. There's no safe passageway for walking or driving to get to local jobs on Whiskey Road during peak times whether you're in a car or whether you're a pedestrian. There's no safe way to get to work from there. I work there, I know. Um, I personally don't think routing pedestrians through the Walmart parking lot is a solution either, but that's just my personal opinion. Walmart parking lot is also a crowded area, but again, that's just my personal opinion. Your planning board voted unanimously to recommend not to approve this annexation and approval concept plan. I urge this council to consider this heavily before voting tonight. I think that's, that's pretty much all I have to say tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of you. And thank you for your dedication and service to the town that we all call home. Thank you, Ms. Hopkins. I, I feel obligated to at least correct, though, there certainly is a plan for the connectivity, the powerhouse connector, uh, because of a holdup with the Infrastructure Bank of South Carolina, nothing to do with the city. We were not able to put that petition through until this, this last cycle, but we have a petition that's in there with, with the projects uh, to be funded as well as local match for that. So I don't know who led you to believe that that project was dead, but it certainly is not. And, and it is a priority of this council. So I, I just wanted to. my assumption from yeah. being at the October 15th planning and zoning. I, I just, I just want to let you. And I'm a little new to trying to sure. figure this stuff out. So sure, no, no problem. I may have I just, spoke on a couple of things. I just know you, you did fine. I just wanted to let you and everyone else know that that project certainly is alive and a focus of this council so that is that is great news sir thank, thank you in, in 125 million dollar project that that includes the powder house extension that, correct that is everything every connection that's everything, everything. It's not just road. Road. Uh, that is correct yeah that, that was a total package yeah
Sure. Sure. I just want to point out, though, and, and again, I could be wrong, but what I was told is it's all or nothing. No, no ma'am. That is not correct. Okay, okay, been, okay. Fantastic. That is yeah. much better news right. to hear. That right. makes a lot more sense. Anyone else wish to speak? And, and I'm going to say that I, I certainly wanted Mr. Fishburne and, and uh, Ms. Hopkins to have an opportunity to speak because they're certainly right there and everyone's impacted, but... I do need to start enforcing the five minute. So at 4.30, I will. No, you're fine, Marsha, but uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, yes, Mr. Besson. Good evening, Bob. Good evening, Council. Bob Besson, 733 West Rolling Wood here in the city of Aiken. Um, I frequent many businesses on Whiskey Road. I go to work down that way every day, come back from work every day. And we all know there's a traffic problem, but my concern more than the traffic is the infrastructure. If these folks want to build new affordable housing, I'm all for that. It can continue to grow. We need to keep up with other communities. However, we don't have the infrastructure there, so why would we ever put the cart before the horse? Thank you very much. Mr. Besley, while you're here, because you're a former planning commissioner and with a lot of experience, if the developers are talking about building that road to, to relieve Owens to Nielsen, does it not bear consideration in your opinion? Mayor, when the first complex that is there now came before the Planning Commission, I was a member, right. and we were led to believe at that point that a lot of that infrastructure that does not exist even to this day right. would be in place, including uh, enhancements to Owen Street and to other driveways, just a, a variety of different things there. I've yet to see that. I've been out there a couple times. Sure. And I've walked around there just recently when I saw the sign that it was going to the Planning Commission again. So it does concern me that we want to do another project in that same area, although we still have not addressed issues that right. were brought up three or four years ago or whenever that was built, uh, brought before City Council and not only the Planning Commission. So it should be, it should definitely be something if, if, if allowed, the road would have to be done and completed before a CO would be issued, would be a way of... At a minimum, yeah. at a minimum. We've got to, in city government here in the city of Aiken, I encourage you to please put things in place right. that hold these contractors. I agree. From the very beginning, that if it doesn't happen, you're not going to put the first person there. Thank you. Mr. Besson, appreciate your service. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Susan Joyce and live at 130 Champion Pine Lane. And I really just have one comment here. Um, my concern is not necessarily the number of cars that are going to be added to the situation there, but the pedestrian traffic. As I recall in the first article I read that came in the Aiken Standard, it was quoted that most of the residents of this complex will be walking to jobs and services within a mile of that residence. No one can say safely walk in that area. You can't get across Whiskey. You can't get across Doherty. So unless they're all going to walk to Walmart to do everything, they're stuck. If they have no cars, there's no public transportation. Right. Thank you. No, valid. Thank you very much, Ms. Joyce. Appreciate that. Anyone else like to address council? Yes, sir. You've been patient. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you all ago. Good evening. Good evening. My name is George Clare. Uh, I am a resident of Aiken, but I'm here as a representative of the Aiken County Homeless Commission. Uh, you may recall just a few weeks ago, our officers came before you and, and uh, introduced themselves as a, as a new organization in town uh, for the, the benefit of the audience. Uh, our, our organization uh, tries to support homeless folks uh, by coordinating the existing service providers to make sure that there aren't gaps or overlaps in the way services are provided. Uh, we, we not only look at the homeless themselves, but we also look to uh, prevent homelessness and to help folks come out of homelessness. And uh, certainly housing uh, is an important part of, of what we look at uh, in our organization. Uh, now, Considering annexation uh, of Woodford Trace uh, clearly falls into the category of, of preventing homelessness. 
uh, and there clearly is a gap, as was pointed out by the developers this evening, that Aiken has a, has a real need for affordable housing. Our organization does not take a position on the annexation uh, of this project, the, the, the property for this project. We aren't experts in infrastructure or traffic or zoning, and, and we don't pretend to be. Uh, however, again, we are concerned about affordable housing. So we would point to one fact and ask two questions. Uh, the first fact, the fact is that uh, many of the folks living in this development are expected to be low income, merely $11, $12 an hour, something like this, okay? And if you're trying to raise a family, if you have a, indeed have a job that requires you to have a car and you're paying insurance and you're paying kids to go to school, you're going to be on the edge. You're going to have a difficult time making ends meet. And God forbid you lose your job for two months, three months, because at that point you are indeed homeless. Okay. So <clears throat> failure to provide afford more affordable housing in Aiken is in fact condemning members of our community at some point to homelessness. That's a fact. So the questions. The first question is that if, if Woodford Trace project is built, which as I understand it, can be built with or without annexation, I have no idea where the developers stand on that question, and I don't propose to put words in their mouth, but if it were built, is it better that the property be annexed or not annexed? Consider with annexation, you have trash pickup, you have local law enforcement, you have tax base, you have better code enforcement, and as we heard this evening, you have the developers agreeing to cooperatively help establish those connectors, both the sidewalks and the streets. Question number two, if Woodford Trace is not built, what is city council, what is the planning commission gonna do to identify better locations for affordable housing for the folks in Aiken who need it. Here we have a developer stepping up to the plate to do that for you. <clears throat> if the developer doesn't do it, what are you going to do to step into the breach? Lastly, I'd, I'd like to address my friends and neighbors of Aiken uh, who indeed feel a sense of loss. Mr. Clare, you'll address me. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. I, what, what, I would, uh, what I would say to my neighbors is that uh, we certainly understand that they feel some sense of loss, whether it's a longer commuting time or foot traffic through their property, whatever. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's difficult. That, that's difficult for anybody. But I would ask, plead that they consider this situation with an open heart. You know, whether Christian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, Unitarian, all the great religions of the world say that we should love our neighbors and look after our neighbors. Okay. And it just may be that the challenges associated with Woodford Trace is somebody's challenge that God has laid before them to prove out their faith. And that maybe not just the construction but the, and, and the, the infrastructure issues are a challenge, but maybe there's an opportunity there for the local residents to help mentor some of those folks, to help take care of the kids, to truly look after their neighbors with the love that God intended us to have. Thank you, Mr. Clare. Appreciate your comments. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. I'm Diane Tenzo, and I live in Palmetto Cross. So actually, what they're saying about the traffic I just wanted to address I used to live in Kennebunk Maine I don't know if you've ever heard of it it's a small town of about 9,000 however we get a lot of traffic and so if you connect Owen Street through what is now that fire road for that goes between the two properties and you connect it to going in front of there what you're going to create in Kennebunk we call it a sneak street and if you think only the residents are gonna go there, it's not gonna take long 
for everybody to figure out, well, let me get off Dowdy and I can sneak over to Walmart. Yeah. You're gonna have a terrible, <clears throat> terrible amount of traffic going every which way on that little, it, it'd be better if they didn't go all the way through because you're gonna create a sneak <coughs> street. So I don't know if you've ever heard of those before, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I've, never I've, never heard the, I've never heard the term before, but when you say it, I know exactly yeah, what you mean. Yeah, that's so what sure. it's called, sneak I street. I have heard it and yeah. I had a giggle when you yeah. Yeah. reminded me of it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Patenza. Appreciate you being here tonight. Okay. Yes, ma'am, in the back in the blue. She was she out of hand. Good good evening. My name is Ann Kitchings and I grew up at nine eleven Daltery Road. At that time Whiskey Road was a two lane road. We went across to Bonneview to visit our friends. No assistance at, in first grade. Now I would not cross the road on Daltery to get to my mailbox on the other side. I came home from work one day to find a cross painted on, on the road in front of my mailbox. Turned out someone had been hit and killed. I thought my dad was dead. Um, huge relief when I found out that he was okay. I still have major concerns Y'all are doing all this incredible work. 9-11 Daughtery is at the intersection of Christie Place and Daughtery. My yard, our front yard, has had tremendous work done on it. And it's gonna be, it's gonna help. I really think it will help what y'all have done to the intersection there. But when we add 48 more units with 48 more cars minimum, I'm really concerned about what that's gonna happen then to traffic coming on to Daughtery off of Owens when I can't get out of our driveway for 10 minutes because no, the, it's bumper to bumper from the top of the hill all the way down to Whiskey. I'm concerned about traffic. I'm concerned about safety for other people in cars. I'm concerned about safety for <coughs> walkers um, that's just daughtery that doesn't even include what's going on on whiskey so please 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 consider the traffic that's my that's my big issue thank you miss kitchens thank you. appreciate you being here tonight <laughs> yes sir over in the wings <laughs> Good evening. My name is John Durgens. I live at 203 Pine Hill Drive in the county. I've asked this question to some of other people in town or from time to time. I've been here 13 years now, and I'm retired, and I don't have anything to do besides ride around all day long and look <laughs> at things. <laughs> Over the period of time, with all my riding around town, from where the $2 stores are sitting, down along the railroad tracks, going straight through Aiken, going out and you'd come back around to where the old hospital was or the old county building and go out to the road where uh, the new county building is. I've counted 100 houses that are empty. A lot of them are really good houses. And I've asked people, I said, why are those houses empty? You know, you, you see them all the time and they could, you could be broken up into two family. Some of them are rather large houses. They could be broken up to three family, you know, for lower income people. I, it doesn't make sense. When they, what they say to me is that, well, they inherited the houses. So they, they must have inherited them 13 years ago when I came here because the houses are still empty mm -hmm. and just slowly go in the pot. I think if some contractor or building company who has some <coughs> deep pockets would come in and look at these homes, and it wouldn't really cause a traffic problem because they're already spread all over town. And it'd be easy in and easy out through all the roads to get out to where the traffic is. The traffic problem is not gonna get solved. That's, that's a simple fact. It's because it's just not easy to get from A to B. And if, if you, what I personally do, I don't go down and sit in the traffic. I drive all the way around to where I know where I can get where I'm going so I don't sit through the light three or four times. 
But why wouldn't anybody want to take on, there's 10 beautiful homes right there from Lawrence Street going up to the, the old uh, hospital on each side. Plus well, an office complex which has been abandoned for about 13 years. It's, it's pretty good size. Why doesn't anybody ever think of that or, or is it, you know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't even, it's not my business, but I just hate to see the homes just go to pot when if there's a housing pro problem, these houses could sell people with uh, housing with, they don't have a lot of funds. We, we do too, Mr. Durgan. We, we, know, we know those we know those properties well, and we uh, well, I guess we try to so encourage. You've been here your whole we, life. We try to encourage, and some of them have been empty. I can I can vouch for the years before your 13 years. Some oh, of them have been empty or longer than that. that. But as far as getting from A and to B, and I will say, we actually have some some uh, individuals who are who are starting to build and redo a lot of those houses. You're seeing seeing more and more of them redone, but uh, certainly not at a rate fast as as we would like to you see. Know, well. It would. It takes time to get them, I and you have to. You'd have to go through them all to really see how really good some of the houses still are. That's yes, that's sir. obvious. But to, to, to continually argue about Doherty Road and the other roads, it's not going. It's not going to change because it, there's a lot of things you could do, but it's going to cost a lot of money, and it's going to be an infrastructure on other people's land, and you know you go to court, and it's going to be a big headache. But I I think that some of these homes and everything would be be the thing right. to do. Thank you, Mr. Durden. Time. Appreciate you being here. Anyone have anything new to add to the? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. My name is Billy Putnam. I actually am a partner in VSL Development who sold the land to Palmetto Crossing. I'm also the owner of the property in consideration um, from Wood, for Woodford, Woodford Trace. I understand safety concerns. Everybody in this room has those same concerns. We want those resolved. Those can be resolved by working with connected businesses and working with the city and coming up with solutions for sidewalks. We understand that. We also understand that traffic in our town on Whiskey Road is really bad. But we also know that everyone there in business have chosen to be there for the traffic. And of the five businesses that have come into play in the last 18 months on Whiskey Road, from Krispy Kreme to Taco Bell, all of those are here for the traffic. So we understand the traffic can be positive and negative. And I think the businesses that have expressed their interest, I mean, their opinions today, want to be on Whiskey Road for the business, I mean, for the traffic as well. So let's work on a solution for sidewalks, road connectivity. The developers already expressed their interest in doing that and being proactive. And I think it's a positive um, project. I think we have, as Mr. Pethick mentioned, 600 families that need housing right now, affordable housing. And when Palmetto Crossing opened, 800 folks applied, 800 families applied for those 48 units. Those 800 folks, if they could represent affordable housing right now, they would fill up this room. And I think that has to be considered. We know we have infrastructure issues, but we know we can address them. And I think this developer has proven what they want to do. But thank you. That's it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Putnam. <coughs> Any other comments to add to it? Very good. I'd like to thank the audience for your comments. Uh, I often say it's the it's the quality, not the quantity. And I think everyone's made made some very very valid comments tonight. So thank you for that. This time I'll open up comments from council. Well, I'll say something. Uh, this is a tough project. We need this kind of housing. We need these units. Well, we could use three times this amount. I have no, no question in my mind that we do need them. The question is, do we need them here? And I understand why this thing was picked, but we know what the real reality is. We have a traffic problem. Our planning commission voted unanimously because of infrastructure not to do this. Uh, we have put those people on planning commission because we trusted their judgment. 
I think that the developer has stepped up to the plate and offered some solutions, but at this particular time, we don't have those solutions worked out. There'll be a second reading on this, so whatever we decide tonight is not the final word, but the question is how do we go forward with it? Um, for, for me, I'm going to have to side with our planning commission on this at this point, see what they come back to us at a second time, and maybe it'll resolve these problems. But we have a traffic issue that has been well pointed out. We've promised a lot, and nothing's happened out there. And until we can make some assurance that something's going to happen to alleviate some of that traffic, <coughs> I think, think this issue is it. I worry about kids there trying to go to school and cross from Whiskey Road. And it may not get to second reading if everyone feels that way. Yeah, so that's just my opinion on my feeling. Very good. Any other comments from council? Mr. Um, Mayor, uh, uh, Councilwoman I Brill? tend to agree with Councilman Woltz. This is first reading. Um, I believe the developers are in good faith. I think they've made some great <coughs> strides and suggestions. And as we discussed in work session and Councilman Diggs brought up, uh, there were some offers made, but they have, we don't have it in concrete yet that they are going to help with that road, that that road can be done. That is the only way to alleviate some of that traffic. And until that can be, that we know that that can happen. It's not just we're going to work on it, we think it can be done, that we have something signed and we can look at. I can't support it at this time. Very good. Any other comments? Um, I'd like to add a few things. I, I heard a, a lot, and I, I can't sit here and say anybody's right or wrong, um, because I think everybody's absolutely right. But unfortunately, that's just not the way this cookie's going to crumble. And I, I heard a, a comment that kind of stuck with me. Um, you know, we've had these safety and traffic control uh, issues for 20 years. That doesn't make it okay. Um, regardless of, of how we move with this project, we need first and foremost to be good stewards to the citizens and the potential residents of this particular development. Um, my biggest concern really, I mean, I live on the south side and it took me an hour to get from point A to East Gate today because it was a hot mess. Granted, there's construction going on. But that's not really my concern. My concern are the pedestrians, and I've made that abundantly clear to many parties. There is absolutely zero um, avenues for pedestrian traffic. Uh, something else that stuck to me is the this, this state um, granted this project a super duper A plus rating. I struggle with that because, yes, there's schools and there's mm, jobs and there's all kinds of things that attract this particular demographic but we would not necessarily not necessarily be good stewards um, of their safety if they're walking afoot um, again they may have cars maybe the majority do and that would affect the traffic but at the end of the day that traffic's not putting too many people in danger as the pedestrian approach would put uh, people in, in danger I also worry about emergency vehicles. We have a retirement community, um, spe specifically on that side of town, and that's a concern when emergency response can truly be affected in such a horrendous manner. So that's part of safety. On the flip side, you know, we have a desperate need for this particular project and affordable housing in general. And I sit back and I think we would be depriving families and children of a proper living condition and quality of life. So again, I'm going back to who's right and who's wrong. Um, so I would personally like to see this go to second reading for this reason. Not because I think I'm all for this project necessarily, because I just, I think, made that point abundantly clear. But at some point, us as council and the citizens of Aiken, we need a starting point, and maybe this is it. 
to somebody's point, you know, maybe we get people to bring it to a drawing board and assume that responsibility of those sidewalks, those roadways, that connectivity, that decongestion approach, because pushing these types of projects off or approving projects where we as a city are not holding people um, liable or accountable to provide these basic human um, rights is also wrong. So I'd like to see this go to second reading personally so we can bring it to the table and talk to the developer and talk to the city and maybe even the county and see what we can do to make sure that this project installs the proper sidewalks, roadway, potential connectivity that they have in good will and good faith <clears throat> suggested. I'd like to hear what they have to say. And if we don't pass this to second reading, we wouldn't hear that potential option. We'd be stuck with the current traffic situation, with the few sidewalks we have on Whiskey Road that lead to nowhere, with no potential of these sidewalks that lead to nowhere eventually connecting to somewhere. So with that said, I'd like to see this go to second reading. Very good. Any other comments from council? I just, <clears throat> from listening to you guys talking about Doherty Road and it being dangerous, I, off the top of my head, I can think of two friends that I went to high school with who were killed on Doherty Road. One of them walking, the other one in a car. So yeah, it's bad. 20 years ago, I ran for city council and Roger Ledoux took me out to either end of Doherty Road and said, we're gonna fix all of this. And they did fix the, the Silver Bluff side and it, that works pretty well. Finally, we're getting over to the other end of it and that's getting done too. But I hear your pain of talking about things and we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it, and it doesn't get done. I, that's gotten rather sickening, quite frankly. So. From, from my perspective, Andrea is exactly right. I'd like to see it go to a second reading, but I also would like to see the plan for moving the traffic up Pawnee Connector to the backside, which is in the plans. We have a plan for that. It's part of the $125 million plan, which also it goes a Cracker Barrel all the way up to Powderhouse Road. That's a huge plan, and we're in the process of doing all this, and it is painstakingly slow. Sometimes we want to beat our head against the wall trying to get some of this stuff done. But now's the time. This is an opportunity to move some things forward that need to be done. And now's the time to get it done, but not pass this. This doesn't pass tonight. It passes to the second one and have something in place on the second one so we can get something done that is constructive for what's there now. That's me. Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Councilwoman Price. We've talked about traffic for 20, 25 years in this town. This is nothing new, as you all have said already. Saying no and doing nothing is not a solution. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been doing. We've been saying no, or we would approve and say we're going to do these things, and nothing happened. Right. We can come up with some solutions. We can, and we have some in the and the hammer to, do, to come up with some of these solutions. But it takes time. Some of you commented three years, four years, nothing has happened. But these things sometimes take time. And I think we can fix some of this 20 years ago. Do you know what I recommended as a solution to our problem? I do. What was that? A bridge. <laughs> and I thought I was going to be uh, thrown out of town. <laughs> you are going to disrupt the entire town. Aiken does not need a bridge. We're too sophisticated for a bridge. If we had built one 20 years ago, a lot cheaper, we could have solved a lot of the problem in terms of relieving Whiskey Road of some of the traffic concerns. That being said, I support my colleagues who want to move it to the second reading, let's come up with some alternative. And I respect each one of you and your opinion. And especially if you live in an area, I don't live on 
the south set of south. I do live in an area on Hampton Avenue, off of Hampton Avenue, where there is traffic problems, there is traffic congestion, but not to the degree of which you see it every day. So I understand your pain and your passion. <coughs> Let's see what we hear at the second reading. And I respect people and their wishes where they live. Only you endure that and you know what the pain is like Thanks. in terms of seeing that every day. Thank you for coming. All right, very good. The only way I can <coughs> support a second reading is if we can get something in writing ensuring us that this road situation will be taken care of. Got to have it. All right. Okay, I think that's everyone's had an opportunity to speak. We'll call the question. All those in favor of first reading of an ordinance to annex 4.56 acres near Owen Street and zone it planned residential PR and approve the concept plan to move it to second reading, please raise your hand. With those conditions. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, that's Councilwoman Price, Councilwoman Gregory, the Mayor, Councilwoman Diggs, Councilman Gerardo, all those opposed, Councilman Waltz, and Councilwoman Broll. So it, it moves forward to second reading. It sounds like our staff and the developers have a lot of work to do before second reading. Um, just to echo what Councilwoman Gregory said, if it doesn't have those plans and a plan for it to be done before the CO is issued, I won't, I won't support it for second reading either. So, Thank you. Council is going to take a five minute recess. Recess, you get to play on the playground. It's going to run. I know. Five to two to pass it.
here. Where did everybody go? <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to call our meeting back to order. Richard is still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone allowing that. We're going to continue down our new business for item number three on the agenda. Uh, this is a first reading of an ordinance approving a budget adjustment for emergency sewer line repair at Medical Park Drive by title and ordinance amending the budget of the City of Aiken for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2019 yeah. and ending. Yeah, did I, did you, I skip, skip, skip one? Number two. two. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Trash there. You know what? I um, I put a check mark by it before we were set. So. <laughs> Quick doodle. Over. Excuse me. We're on item number two. First ring of an ordinance amending the section section 32-3 of the city code regarding residential yard trash collection by title and ordinance amending section 32-3 of the code of city of the city of Aiken to set forth yard ref refuse and materials collection procedures and responsibilities. Is there a motion? So I, so, uh, second. Third. I think we have Councilwoman Gregory <laughs> who made a motion and, and uh, Councilwoman Diggs made a second. Comments from staff. Thank you. Um, at our work session uh, November 25th, we had a presentation from Public Services Director Lex Kirkland regarding suggested uh, changes to amend our yard trash ordinance to allow for a more efficient process and effective process for our customers. Uh, we are working on uh, some material uh, pending council approval to, to get this uh, out to our customers, our residential yard waste customers. Uh, these changes are what we discussed at our last meeting or at the work session and they are noted in the coverage cover memo and we have this before you uh, for first reading um, in public hearing tonight. Thank you, Mr. Beanmo. Any comments from the audience? <clears throat> Comments or questions from council? I just, Mr. Mayor, I have to say one question. Uh, how are we going to let uh, the public know about these uh, changes well, or adaptions? Well, thank you. That that's a very good question. Uh, several ways. Um, one is certainly through um, the website, social media. The Water Bill newsletter uh, is an, a very effective source. It goes to every one of our. Uh, residential uh, yard waste folks and also where needed we will have some material to for uh, property owners but that's more of an issue of uh, if they're not in compliance uh, but but the primary ways will be social media website and through the water bill newsletter okay. and I suspect the paper I know they're not here but uh, we will be working with uh, the media uh, including the standard to Put an ad uh, in the get that out show. yes yeah. yes but I know uh, we started that uh, pending council approval. We uh, went to the chamber first Friday event. Uh, Friday, Lex gave a presentation uh, talking about uh, some of these changes. It was more though related to the garbage, but again, uh, we, we've got a lot of avenues. Our app, our television. Yes. Okay. And by the way, Lex, my pile this week is going to be more than 12 feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm under the wire, right? Very it's leaf good. season. <laughs> Very good. And I've, I found myself riding around looking at piles of leaves all week long. And Lex pointed out that we needed to have the uh, one exception pile. for the leaves. And you're right. If you build the leaves 10 feet tall, they blow off the top and they go everywhere. So it, we're going to have to have something of a, so an we're extension. We're having classes on how to build a proper pile. But, <laughs> well, there's no way to do it. All right. We got lots of leaves. <laughs> this is a first ring of an ordinance amending section 32-3 of the code regarding residential trash collection. All those in favor of first ring, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down now to item number three. This is a first ring of an ordinance approving a budget adjustment for emergency sewer line repair at Medical Park Drive by title and ordinance amending the budget of the city of Aiken for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2019 and ending June 30, 2020 for emergency sewer repair at Medical Park Drive. Is there a motion? I so move. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council. Councilwoman Broll. Comments from staff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I reported to you in an email uh, recently, we did have this sewer, uh, emergency sewer repair, uh, sewer line failed, and um, 
we went ahead and repaired it. We reported it to DHEC as required and got the necessary clean cleanup work done. Uh, appreciate the assistance Aiken Regional Medical Center gave us uh, um, when we were notified of the failure. Uh, due to the fact it was over $25,000, we need to bring to council a budget adjustment. The work has already been done due to the fact it was uh, sanitary sewer being discharged, uh, so it is repaired. But um, for our per our audit requirements, we do need to have this budget adjustment to reflect this uh, emergency repair cost. All right. Thank you, Mr. Beanbum. Any comments from the audience? Comments on council? All those in favor on first reading of this budget adjustment, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving down to item number four under new business, this is a first reading of an ordinance authorizing the city to provide certain incentives to Aiken Steeplechase Association, Inc. to encourage tourism and economic development benefiting the city. By title and ordinance authorizing the city of Aiken, South Carolina, to provide certain incentives to Aiken Steeplechase Association to encourage tourism and economic development benefits to the city and other matters related thereto. Is there a motion? I so. All right. Thank you, Councilwoman Diggs. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilman Gerardo. Comments from staff. Thank you. We do have before you this ordinance to authorize these incentives. We were approached earlier this year by the Steeple Ch Aiken Steeplechase Association regarding this um, uh, issue that they were facing. They uh, will need to vacate their current space uh, through a, a joint um, understanding with their current um, the property owner, the Aiken Horse Park. Uh, they've identified approximately 100 and the, since the cover memo, the number's been reduced. Uh, it's less than 145 acres, and it's property that's bordered by Richland Avenue East, Old Wagner Road, and Rudy Mason Parkway. Uh, they have asked us for assistance uh, regarding the acquisition of the project. Um, after some discussion that we've had with the Steeplechase Association, both uh, staff and members of the board of the Steeplechase Association, plus discussions that you've had with um, uh, the council has had with members of the Steeplechase Association. What is before you tonight is um, the following, a million five hundred thousand dollars of city funds towards the purchase of this property. Of that one million dollars, uh, I do want to describe for the record the funds apportionment um, that uh, is before council consideration this evening. We have a million dollars in the form of a grant to the Steeplechase Association. That would mean there would not be any repayment required to the Steeplechase Association. Uh, the funds would be from our capital project sales tax to money allocated for green space. Um, this capital project sales tax two was passed by the voters in November 2004. Um, also, hospitality tax funds of 500000 to equal the $1 million in the form of a grant. The remaining would be in the form of a loan. The terms of the loan, at this point, uh, what's under consideration would be um, interest-only payments for the first five years, then payments at least on an annual basis for 20 years at an interest rate equal to the rate quoted by the state of South Carolina's local investment local government investment pool, which is essentially uh, funds that are under deposit with the uh, state treasurer's office uh, that the city has. They accrue interest. Um, currently, um, the interest rate is 2.978%, excuse me, 1.978. We would add 1% if that was the rate at the time of uh, an agreement is executed. So using that math, it would be an interest rate of 2.978. The fund apportionment is local accommodations tax funds in the amount of 300,000 and hospitality tax funds in the amount of 200,000. Simple interest would begin to accrue at the beginning of the transaction, which should it follow this path uh, before council would take place most likely January of 2020. Uh, this property would be required as a condition of any assistance. Uh, it would be required to annex into the city of Aiken once it becomes contiguous to our corporate limits. And we have before you tonight first reading and public hearing of this ordinance authorizing the city of Aiken to provide these in certain incentives to the Aiken Steeplechase Association. Very good. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Bean, but also I'd, I'd like to ask, um, are, have there been requirements? As, I know we've, we've had conversation as far as uses other than uh, what type of events and that sort of thing. Could you kind of yes. capsule that conversation? Right. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Currently, and again, uh, at first, this is how it stands at first reading. Right now, I believe the, it stands that um, there would be the, the city could have up to five days of use of the property in a calendar year, provided it does not interfere with preparations for the steeplechase events that would be held each fall and each spring. Very good. All right. Comments from the audience. All right. Yes, sir. Mr. Rhodes. Good evening. Good evening. How are y'all? Good. Yeah. Uh, nice. Council. No AC in here, though. <laughs> <laughs> Normally we have plenty. So uh -huh. this, is the, this is the other end. We either have all or nothing. All or none, yeah. Um, I asked a question. And if you if first would, of all, Jim, Jim, I know who you are. But uh, just Jim, I'm Jim Rhodes, uh, citizen, Aiken County. Um, I personally do not want to lose the steeplechase. It's, uh, it's a staple of, the, of Aiken. Uh, I'm very much supportive of it. I'm glad the city is stepping up to give some help. Um, I asked a question, what was green space? This money that was spent in our city accounts or coffers since uh, 2006, uh, roughly. Um, so I asked a question, what was green space, and, what, and the person I asked it to couldn't answer that question, said so they'd get back with me. But I looked it up, and this falls within the code of that. According to the dictionary, an area of undeveloped landscape, such as a park, left, land left within the city during planning and zoning. So um, areas, uh, while other areas are being developed around it. Well, we all know the bypass has no development on that stretch. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. Is there already water and sewage there? No. <coughs> yes. Uh, yeah, okay. uh, to answer your question, there is limited access to uh, sewer. Uh, would, <coughs> depending on the type of development or sewer needs, where, for example, for this property, it would be minimal. Well, it would cost probably between two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars, depending on how much sewer Over work is above. needed. Over. Correct mm -hmm. to to get sewer to that property. Uh, there is uh, water access um, right now for there for that location, but sewer is, of course, there's a reason why this property has been undeveloped. I will say over the in the recent past that I've been aware of, we've had developers look at this tract and when they see how much it will cost to get sewer to it, they uh, are not interested. So the money that's being borrowed and loaned would not c cover that sewage, correct? No. Or water? It would not. No. No. The city no. would have to take on that responsibility. We would, we would bond. Uh, we would bond. To is it that. connected to city property now? Or would you have to annex other properties to make it city property? It is not contiguous currently. It is not continuous. So you would have to annex other properties to make this property Continue. part of the city. Um, is there guarantees? Personally, I think the city ought to step up and lend the entire 2.17 and hold the first note. Um, when you have a bank involved, they're going to have the first mortgage. If there is, and the word if, I hate the word, but you have to use the word if. If something happens in the future in the equine industry, because we're all judged, I'm in the flat racing business, and we're all judged completely across the world now. Something that happens in California affects us here in Aiken when it comes to the equine industry, the steeplechase industry. Something happens something somewhere else. The um, and I hate to use I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just just use be politically incorrect. The butterfly and rainbow people, right? They're after racing. They're after racing right now. So I would say the city needs to take control of the entire property and this entire loan. Let the steeplechase committee 
borrow the money for the infrastructure that they need to make the track. And if, that bad word, if something happens, the taxpayers and the money is not wasted and given to the bank. The way it looks right now, the bank has the best end of the deal. Um, you know, there again, I do not want to lose the steeplechase. And I appreciate the city coming up and helping. I think the county needs the help. They, you know, they're not. The city is willing to help. The city does have the funds. It will not hurt the city to come up with $600,000 more okay. on that. And that's all I got to say. All right. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Any other comments from the audience? Okay. Mr. Sauerborn? Jim, I, I, he's coming up. I want to let you know. Uh, we actually, due to a conversation we had, I looked up that that uh, definition, and I have it here for you tonight. Also, good evening, uh, Paul Sauerborn, Mayor, uh, President of the Aiken Steeplechase. Uh, the contingent behind me is primarily board members that have been waiting to have this opportunity. Um, I, I've, I think, for the benefit of. Uh, uh, the last uh, speaker, uh, I think I need to point out the fact that uh, we, we've looked at this thing from several different angles, but some of the, the positive impacts from our, our event uh, for the community just to, to reinforce the city's position, I think, is that we, we will actually stimulate uh, additional economic development in an area that right now doesn't have that, that capability. I think we're creating a new corridor of development in that particular area. I think we're going to increase the tax base. These are all things that I think will be proven out. Um, there'll be revitalization in the surrounding areas while preserving the green space. Um, there'll be increased property values. Uh, we can foster new business to locate nearby. We'll definitely increase tourism. We already have tourism as a part of steeplechase uh, we get use accommodations tax money and and uh, bring a lot of people in from out of uh, this area um, and I think you know in the long run it's going to allow us to provide long-term returns for Aiken and the CSRA um, a lot of people don't realize this but we're oversubscribed for our spring race that race is uh, at a point where we can't we can't put more people on that property that we currently are at so the move is appropriate it's just timing is never perfect but now is the time um, and, and above all uh, you know steeplechasing in Aiken started back in 1930 and we're preserving a, a very historical element here quality of life and tradition for the community that I think would be terribly lost if we if if, if we could not get support um, and, and, and another point is that uh, we certainly intend to host other special events out there at that location. So, um, you know, I, I heard, I just had to get up and stand up. You, you all have heard the story. I'm prepared to give you another rendition if you, if you show so desire. But I think, um, you know, we've dialogued on this quite a long time. Uh, uh, do you have any questions of me? I mean, I, I'm, I'm here to answer questions, and, and I'll do my best to do that. If not, I'll go back and sit down. I have a question, um, and I've heard from several people who've asked the question of me, so I'll ask you the question. I've been told that uh, Steeplechase has plenty of money. Why do you need to give them any money? Okay. Uh, do you have financials that you can share with us so that I know you gave us well, a I, can, I can certainly uh, share you know share with you uh, we're a 501 c3 organization we're not for profit right uh, we also uh, are unique in the sense that being a nonprofit we give to other nonprofits in charitable ways um, we would probably have uh, our till filled if if we weren't so gracious, I mean, over a million and a half easily uh, in monies that have been uh, doled out over the years to various local uh, needy uh, community businesses, et cetera. Uh, so 
so the the f certainly I can make the financials available. I mean, I, I have no reason to hide them. I, I think it's part of our charter. I mean, if they need 1099s, that's certainly fine. But uh, uh, the point is that you know we just want to put races on and and do this for the community's better interest. Uh, and at the same time, all these indirects that I just mentioned earlier, well, I think. Uh, come to life so when you look at the amount of money that the city's investing and that's that's not the whole ticket um, actually it's 3.9 million plus is the total ball of wax so we're, we're still trying to handle a, a, a debt service on that amount of you know it's about 62 percent so that's that's pretty significant and a big a big bite and without your help I, I'm, I, I doubt seriously that we'll be able to proceed on this this effort so um, uh, Paul I think that's all I have yeah um, we agreed upon it, it was I think it basically a consensus by council with the 1.5 million dollar support now it is 2.1 we're hearing right now right no, I, we're, 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 we're very satisfied with what I read in the ordinance. Um, that, that would help us get to where we need to be. Um, if you guys elect to want to go some other direction, I can't stop that. But, um, I'm, I think our group is very satisfied with what's been put on in the ordinance. A question that we need to ask ourselves 1.5 million leaves us with nothing versus 2.1 means that we own the property is that right it would depend i guess on how the how that is structured <coughs> i mean but uh there has it's to be possible we couldn't do that on our own we'd have to ha i mean what are we going to use for collateral to get our balance of you know the the improvements with a one point Eight to almost yeah, we'll take one a point, second position. One point eight million. With the one point five, we'd take a second position. Right. So right. That, right. to to add to that, in my personal opinion, Mr. Paul, I feel we should go all in in the two point one million. Um, I also feel that we should take first position on on the dirt on the property. However, um, I think through discussions and various discussions with whether it's the current financial institution or somebody else, if we give the one million and we're able to not borrow that part, the equity would be there. Plus I know that we have discussed you having additional funding currently maybe as a security whatever the case may be but if if we add those monies and you go come in as a second lien with the improvements even valuing the property even more something of the sort look I'm I'm I'm, I'm just thinking it may be work it would set I feel your organization up for more success because you'd have more money to go after to do the improvements you need to do to become race ready and all that. And I, I feel the potential is grand. I really do. And, and, and for these reasons, um, in council, this is just my thought process is I've, I, I'm a major fan of, of steeplechase and we, we, this is a, a sure shot investment for the city. I'm convinced because a, you guys are a nonprofit B you guys, this organization is driven by reputable volunteers and board members. I mean, I, I feel really strongly about that. C, you mentioned it. Yes, you're cultivating Aiken culture. Every single tradition that we try to gear ourselves towards in a park-like venture, which is what city council should emphasize. Um, in addition, it's the city working with an organization. And this is the part that's always sold me that if there's non-obligated funds you guys redistribute that back into our community charities 
so you know I after we discussed this the first time I went home and I'm like I mean we need to set up the right model where we're gonna set you guys up to succeed and put the city in the right position to this gentleman's point where the taxpayer feels comfortable too and we have that opportunity here because as it stands now we gift a million you borrow 500,000 you got to uh, go find 600,000 and then go find whatever it is to address the improvements that's messy to me um, and this is a an investment that truly is is ideal we have two entities the city and ASA th that are not out for profit right we're just out to do the right thing a solid investment if we can find the right approach and in my opinion if we're able to do the 2.1 million which I feel pretty sure we can and set you guys up to do the improvements and and allocate that money to make that property race ready and improve it from there on out it's only going to build on our investment as a city and then you know then we'll bring it back to the table and see you know do we negotiate to give it back to I don't know I don't know I'm just throwing that out there let, let me just make sure that I'm hearing correctly <coughs> If we're allocating 2.1 million dollars, if we're buying the land at 2.1 million dollars, we own the land. You're saying that you need the land as a collateral. To well, I, mean, to I, the, I have to have to land for collateral to be able to to get the other 1.7 plus million to do the improvements on it. Now, the whole time the improvements are being made, the value goes up. Um, it's just so you're saying that we could recover our 2.1 million I'm getting a little confused too but the point is if you give us 2.1 million on a payback basis mm -hmm. okay you mm -hmm. okay you're gonna you're you're we're being used as the bank to financing. You know, I need to, uh, I, can, I have to dialogue with the bank. I, I'm, I can't speak for that missing entity right now. But so, you can make the deal on the table. That's no work. different than this. Pardon me? The deal on the table will work for you. The deal on the table will work. The propose, this other proposed <clears throat> deal uh, that Councilman Andrea uh, Gregory had proposed here sends a little different twist to it. So it would require me to go back and dialogue right. with the bank. Correct. Correct. Okay. And you're working with time right now. And and I'm and I've got time working against right. us as far as our uh, our move. So. Um, you know, I mean, I I certainly can go back to the banks and dialogue on that particular instance, but I can't give you an answer. Sure, sure. No, I understand you know, that. Tonight. I'm just I'm throwing out um, that out there because it but seems But I certainly cleaner. don't want to slow things down in mm -hmm. in the process. You know, maybe this could be an offline. Uh, if if this does happen to pass today, before tonight. a second reading, before, before a second, second reading, reading mm -hmm. right. which is scheduled for January the 13th. Mm -hmm. There are two hands, Mr. Mayor. Was that? So this is something you can bring back to your financial institution and absolutely yeah I mean it doesn't hurt absolutely oh that'd be great convey that to to um, city manager and staff and they can yes and we can put prepare any necessary adjustments to documentation for council's uh, review <coughs> with the agenda packet for January 13th all right Paul, thank you, and thank you for your diligence in working uh, sure, with you. staff to to come up with something to save uh, what truly is uh, in the CSRA the, the largest single day uh, tourism event that we have. Our event that we have again, Masters is multi day, and uh, certainly as a part of Aiken's Heritage. You know, I, I would I would like to uh, recognize, of course, Aiken Horse Park is has been joint with working with the Aiken Steeplechase Association in the city on this. And yeah, and, and I, I will chime in on that as well. The Aiken Horse Park Foundation has been a great, um, you know, help to us because quite frankly, they don't charge us a dime 
for our, you know, what we put on out there. We, we take care of our piece of it, of the property, which is the track and, and so on, which is logical. But in terms of any rent or any other things uh, associated with uh, paying them, no. Yeah. Which is a great relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? Are you recognized, Jim? Yes, yes, sir. <clears throat> Good I'm evening. Don Hauk. I'm yeah, Jim Aiken, and Good evening. Basically, I've been just volunteering to help the steeplechase to acquire this property. And of course, I found the property for him and know this to Satchel pretty well. And basically, the property is a great property for the steeplechase. As far as access and, and <coughs> as far as the city trying to help them, I think it's a great thing. And that's what I've been trying to do. Um, as far as Jim and coming up here and talking about the, the taxpayers being covered, the property well, is a valuable property. Yeah. And Mr. Holt, we'll, we, we'll just refer to issues, no, no individuals. Right. And the only thing I'm saying is basically there could be some, some negotiations as far as the 140 acres, as far as y'all having maybe they might come back and say, okay, there's a portion of it that y'all could have as security and the bank could have security so they could get their money as far as the operating and putting in the infrastructure and stuff like that. But I'm sure because of the value of the property, there's something to work for the, for the county, I mean, then the city as far as them knowing that they've got some security as well as them going back and trying to get some other money. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your diligence in finding that property too. All right, anything else? Very good. Any comments from the council? I just have one question. I yes, thought sir. the acquisition of that triangle piece of property to make it part of the city was part of the deal, not when it becomes available, but I thought we had said we had to do that to make this part of the deal. Yeah, that's what I was that acquisition is being done through a third party and uh, and a realtor and the status of that, I, I believe, an offer uh, is in the process of being made. So, and I know uh, as of Thursday afternoon, I think we, they were going to try to make an offer. Maybe that that's something that the realtor could convey to staff and. I mean, you know, we need it to be part of the city. If yeah. we don't get that property, it's not going to be. So, I think it needs to be. You no. Know, yeah, absolutely. I believe that was a contingency, correct? Not. I mean, if if you're saying that now, I mean, we discussed that that it would need to come into the city once it's contiguous. But in terms of this deal, this it's this involves a th an entirely different entity that's. Uh, doing the purchase this is not something that's part of the well, I'm agreement I'm not saying the city by it I'm just saying we have to have that, what that right but it has to be available but the ordinance tonight is just the city providing incentives to the Aiken Steeplechase Association the <coughs> correct in that we want to get it contiguous get the property purchased so it can be contiguous to the city but tonight before us only is the ordinance authorizing this money uh, for the Steeplechase Association. So we would want to do this if it didn't come into the city? That's a council question. No, it, no. I, I, don't, I don't believe it is. I, I think that's something that's being negotiated now, though, and probably be more appropriate to let staff send us something before second reading for certain. But as it's being negotiated now, I don't know. And again, it's being negotiated. The, the city is not part of this. No. This is. That, but I'm just saying, I, I thought, you know, our, our presentation to them was, you know, you would come into the city. If they can't come in the city, what happens? Because the way this reads, it, it goes no matter what happens. But, but it, it does have a contingency in there that requires them to annex once they become contiguous. Yeah, but what happens if they don't? I thought we were discussing a piece of property mm -hmm. to help to make that happen. Right. No, the, the, the helping that process that's being done. It's in another gone. entity, which really doesn't need to be discussed. Okay. In public. Yeah. It has nothing to do with this particular. Right. Ordinance. 
Well, I guess I'm taking it back because I thought, thought that was part of it. So you're saying we'll win on county, we'll, we'll invest money in the county property. <clears throat> Without a first name. There is a precedent that you can annex without being contiguous, and we could sick our attorney on that. And there's also condemnation. So, and we do invest money on count uh, property in the county. Um, no, I, I feel by second reading we'll have clarity on this. I hope so. Yeah, I agree. Are any other comments? All, right, all those in favor of first reading of an ordinance authorizing the city to provide certain incentives to Aiken Steeplechase Association to encourage tourism and economic development benefiting the city, uh, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we move down to petitions and requests. Item number one is a request to place banners in the downtown to promote events. Recognize our city manager. Uh, we do have them before you for the steeplechase, March 9th through 23rd, 2020, Savannah River site, 70th anniversary, November 14th through November 30th, 2020 is their anniversary. So those are before you tonight. All right. Is there a motion? So moved. All right. Thank you. Councilwoman Price, is there a second? Second. All right. Councilman Gerardo, any comments from the audience? Comments from council? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, before us next is the city council meeting calendar for 2020. I'll recognize city manager, Mr. Stuart Beanbow. You've got uh, before you uh, the proposed meeting schedule for 2020. And uh, it's before you uh, as presented on the page behind the cover memorandum. Okay. Very good. I, and I meant to check that before our meeting. I remember that uh, Mr. Lowell Colbert. Uh, made mention of our meeting on um, was it, is it veteran was it Veterans Day or that is correct uh, a federal holiday are, yes. we, are we still scheduled for that meeting in this budget I mean no uh, that's meeting? November 9th so we're, we're not this correct year. Uh, okay. and I, I must confess I haven't looked at the calendar beyond 2020 but certainly when there's those federal holidays we are not meeting on National Memorial Day May 25th uh, so all right, very good. Is there a motion? So moved. All right, thank you, Councilman Gerardo. Is there a second? Second. All right, thank you, Councilwoman Gregory. Uh, comments from the audience? Comments from Council? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Anything under issues and updates? Just would like to remind Council of the employee awards program and luncheon uh, the program itself starts at 12 30 Friday uh, you might want to arrive maybe between 12 and 12 15 if your schedule allows so uh, and of course we've got uh, limited off I mean we're closed Christmas Eve Christmas Day and New Year's Day in recognition of uh, Christmas Eve Christmas Day and New Year's Day and I also would like to briefly mention we have, as I noted, filled the risk manager position with someone that we believe is qualified uh, very well for the job. And uh, this individual will start uh, December 23rd. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, we hope everyone has a wonderful, joyful Christmas. And we hope you have a safe and happy New Year's. And with that, I would take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, Councilman Gerardo, second. second. Councilwoman Gregory, all those in favor, please stand up.